Welcome back, everybody, to another action-packed episode of my epic coop build. Today we're going to be putting on the walls of the coop, painting it the color that you may or may not have commented on, and putting in the hardware cloth to predator-proof the outside. You stay tuned for some new exciting action. back everybody to the art of doing. We seek to inspire you to practice doing new and different things, discover new passions, and explore new curiosities. If this is the first time to the channel, please consider giving us a subscription and click the notification bell so you never miss another new episode. We've got several episodes under our belt. I'll give a link up above to the maybe the playlist for the episodes that that have already happened and also I'll links, leave some links down in the description below so you can catch up on the action if you haven't seen all of them already. Let's get into putting on some of these walls and you will be interested to see what type of color we picked. This will be the first sheet that I put on the front of the coop in front of where the nesting boxes are going to go. It's going to go seven foot three and a half inch of length. That'll leave about a foot at the top for ventilation and overlap the bottom of the base so I have something to screw in on the base as well and still leave um, space for trim. So hopefully I learned my lesson on measuring both sides. I measured both sides of the coop to make sure this measurement was going to be good. I'm going to measure both sides of the board and cut it and I'm going to pre-paint all the siding so I don't have to paint while it's up and I can also paint the cut edges, get into places where I might have trouble getting into later and after they're up then I'll cut out the openings for the egg boxes and the doors etc but enough talking let's get at it hey let's get this first sheet hung I'm gonna have to use some clamps to hold this up okay I'm using one and a quarter inch deck screws. I went to uh, green this time for obvious reasons. I think I'll go uh, every foot or so on this. We're gonna have trim that goes over these joints so I'm not too concerned um, with how often that I put this up because they're gonna be tacked down even more. The nesting box is gonna be interrupting the uh, screw in up here. Skip this. The nice thing about the T111 is the stripes will tell you exactly that you don't have to mark where your studs are going to be. If you follow a stripe down, you'll know. Okay, I want to show you how these line up on the studs. So here's the stud that this ends on. Because this was four feet on center and this sheet is four feet, the end of the sheet is on the center of the stud. Now this next sheet is going to overlap this little lip, butt right up against there, and then we can screw them both into the stud. So, here's the, the bottom. So that just worked out beautifully. Measurements were deadly on. Now we can keep on going and installing some more sheets. Like I said, nest box is going to be here. We're just going to cut that out from the inside and leave that space. Cut this out from the inside, leave that space, and push the net bo next bo nest boxes in there. So let's just repeat that. Seven, three and a half. Seven, three and a half. I wonder if I should just pour some paint on this thing. That was easier than the first one. I think the um, roller is starting to soak up some paint and pushing it deeper into these cracks. Beautiful. Not bad. Still kind of a pain. We hit the screw holes of the boards that I already mounted while this dries. It's the second piece. To the back side of uh, the storage area. And now I'll paint it. These are going to be three doors for storage. And 
I don't care that this board isn't going to overlap on that four foot side because these doors are all going to be framed out. I'm going to cut out this opening and make us make swing doors out of each of them and they'll these half sheets will make a little more sense hopefully when I put it up. These half pieces will be mounted to the door frame so I don't care that they're not lining up to um, to connect on the studs. Okay, while this one's drying, we'll cut and measure the two in the front. So this piece is gonna be on the facing side of the coop. It's got an angle to match the ridge line of the roof. I'm not sure how the pros do it, but this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna measure up the height that I want. Then I'm going to measure up to the height of where the forefoot is going to fall on center to where I want the ridge line. I'll make a mark there at that height and then I'll draw a line to here. Okay, like I said, I have no idea how the pros do it. This is how I figured it out. Hopefully it works as deadly as the rest of the scoop is coming out. So we're going to go 6, 5, and 7 eighths up. We're going to go 2, 5, and 5 eighths in from the edge of the coop. This is going to get covered by a piece of trim anyway. But I'm bummed I missed that stud. Okay, this edge is a little beat up. I guess this will get hidden by the um, by the trim, and I'll just chop this part off. But this is the second board on the front side of the coop. It's going to be a lot shorter, and it's going to have a consistent slope the whole way across. I'm going to measure from top down to cut out that damaged piece. Six five and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths. I'm gonna remeasure this. Measures out, just doesn't line up. I wonder if this board is a little crooked. A little off. But I'm measuring from that side down, so if I connect these lines, it should be straight. Okay, double check them on the right side here. So this seam is going to be showing. I'm going to put this on the other side of the coop. So this is hidden by the damage. Okay, I've got the measurement to switch this to the other side of the coop. It's just going to be a 6-4 wall straight cut. Okay, this is the piece that I was trying to cut last time but I had the lap on the wrong side. So six, five, and seven eighths. Take two. That was the last of the first gallon. So I slapped out whatever I had left and just cracked the new gallon. That's why you see all this paint here. This is the last piece, and the low side, 4-3, and I put away the chalk line. So this is the piece I cut off here. I just realized instead of getting a scrap piece, I could just take this exact piece, flip it over, bring it to the top, and it's going to fit exactly. I won't have to remeasure. It won't have the the stripes of the T111, but again, this will be inside the run. I'm gonna hate it every time I see it, but uh, but I will live with it. It's my last sheet of T111. I almost wanna go buy another one, but I'll do this. Get it painted. Oh, I'm so upset I made that mistake, but hopefully I made that mistake so you guys don't have to. Let me put this aside to dry, and then I'll paint this piece. 
this is the piece that has the damaged corner. Trim is gonna cover that. And you'll see that this is a foot lower than this wall. Because this part is under the roof and I'm not worried about rain blowing in, I dropped a little bit more to give a little bit more ventilation up there. So let's tack this one in. Should have marked down here where the stud was. Because that stud up there is turned sideways. It doesn't match exactly this stud. Let's see if I can guesstimate it. So this piece here is measured, cut, and painted. But I'm not going to put it on. I still need access to the inside of the coop to cut out the doors and to do the floor inside there. So this will remain open until I'm done with the interior. I'm going to mark those stud spots before I come out. The clamps weren't tall enough to reach under the framing and still grab the sheeting. I don't think I'm gonna tack down this spot. I think this is where I'll make the two doors meet. So that's the last bit of exterior sheathing. Now we're gonna work on the predator proofing. So I've got this half inch hole hardware cloth, uh, four feet wide. I've got 200 foot rolls of it and I am going to cover every bit of the run and all of my vent holes. I'm gonna use um, poultry nails to secure it, and then we're gonna go two feet underground all the way around the exterior of the coop and the run to prevent animals from digging underneath and getting into the run. Okay, everybody. I realized in my excitement to get the predator proofing netting up that I didn't paint the wood and that it would be incredibly difficult to paint behind the hardware cloth after I got it up. So I stopped what I was doing, painted the rest of all the area that the hardware cloth had to get on, and I dug down about an inch under the area where the hardware cloth had to go under the grass where the level of the coop was high enough where it where it wouldn't get under without digging down. So now I'm clear to go ahead and put all the hardware cloth on. Let's get back into it. So on the corners, I'm gonna overlay about two feet to overlap this way and this way. You'll see when I get this side going. I think I won't tack this down down here. Just let the weight of the dart hit it. But on these corners where this overlaps, I'm gonna tack it down. And by the way, this unpainted wood here, this is gonna have a piece of trim over it, so I don't need to paint here. And the trim will also help hold this netting down. That's why I'm going so sparsely with the staples. And I might end up tying this down with some metal tie wire, just so nothing sneaks in this way. Okay, this is a good time to talk about the predator proofing that's going on the ground as I'm wrapping the underneath the coop. So, the stuff on the uprights makes a lot of sense. Stop a coyote, a raccoon from going through. Stuff underground, they say you only need to go a foot out or a foot down. Basically, the predator is gonna come along till he can't go anymore and start digging. So, if the ground is up to the level of where you're trying to protect. You just want the netting to come out a foot. He's gonna come to the edge, start digging down, hit the hardware cloth, and be done. Where you look down where, where my ground level goes down, I can just put the netting a foot down like this. He's gonna come to the edge, start digging, and he's not gonna dig a foot and a half underneath. Um, basically, they're looking for an easy meal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a two-foot piece. I'm going overkill on everything, as you've noticed. I'm gonna cut a two-foot piece and either go down two feet or out two feet or whatever combination um, works, depending on how high the ground level is here. So over here, it's gonna be two feet out, way down there, it's gonna be two feet down and won't even hit the ground by the time I get there. Let's roll this out. My hardware cloth is in a four foot section. I'm just gonna cut it in half down the middle, two foot section for this side and the far side.
I have a feel for how this worked. I've been using these poultry staples. I was originally thinking I was gonna use screws and washers to really squish down the small holes in the hardware cloth, but after thinking about it, I figured that was gonna be too expensive. And then I was thinking about a staple gun, and I couldn't find one that was really gonna be a strong enough, secure fit. So I ended up going with these. That said, this has taken a long time, a lot of hammering, and it's tough to, to hold this and get it hammered in. The screw and washer might have been better. It would have gone a lot faster, um, but I'm still torn on uh, cost first time. All right, that's all the predator proofing for the run. If you noticed on the run, I put the hardware cloth on the inside. I didn't want the chickens sitting on the two by fours, kicking dirt or crapping up there and rotting out that wood. Around the outside of the coop, I'm gonna put it on the outside so that if I put it on the inside, there would be a little gap here for critters to get down into. So this is gonna sit on the outside and I'm not worried about the rough edge or seeing at the edge, there's gonna be trim that's gonna cover that up. And again, I'm not worried about securing this bottom lip. You see it's only tacked here and here. There's gonna be a piece of trim going over all this, locking it down. Hey guys, this is giving you any value. If you're learning anything from this, I'd love for you to smash that like button. Share this video with your friends or anybody else that might be interested in some of the things we're doing. What part of this coop build should I knock out next? I still have to do the run door, the trim, the nesting boxes, and the coop doors. All of them have fun little tricks. So let me know in the comment section down below and that's what I'll tackle. Predator-proof chicken coop. As you can see, I'm gonna backfill with dirt to bring up to the level of the bottom of the run walls. And that'll be the end of that. Let's stick around for the next episodes. Like I said, leave me a comment down below what part of this coop you want me to attack next. As always, thank you for sticking with me. Let's remember to practice kindness and practice compassion and practice humility. And thank you for being with me to help me practice the art of doing. Click the subscribe up there. Some good videos to watch over here. Thanks everybody.